Now, what the Re Reagan revolution has been is to get the pendulum, you know, as it swings over to the right and then weld it shut with the laws, with the judges, with the control of the government. Now, the key has been, in their planning, has been a war. A war, you have a national, you know, security emergency. Uh, you, you can declare martial law. You can take emergency measures in war that you can't uh, argue in peacetime. Damage that has been done economically uh, 50 years, maybe we will dig ourselves out of this, out of this debt, out of the, the balance, maybe, maybe. But this flawed personality, apparently uh, dating back to the childhood with the, the abusive alcoholic father who, who, who could not give him an image to live up to and at the same time emasculated him with abuse. So you have Reagan's own autobiography the theme of it is this haunting sense of, of inadequacy that has driven him all his life. And that's the theme of the book. And the title he took from one of his movies is Where's the Rest of Me? And this, you know, is, is being cited by the psychological studies that are coming out now as, as why he would have this craving for military power. The Reagan Revolution comes under the close scrutiny of John Stockwell, former CIA official, right now on Alternative Views. Hello, welcome to Alternative Views. We're going to have a talk today with John Stockwell about the Reagan Revolution, in which we'll look at Reagan's attempt to revolutionize foreign policy and to change the direction of U.S. policy in this area. We'll discuss with John what the Reagan Revolution in foreign policy was, what impact and effects it had, and where it stands now with the Iran-Contra scandals. But before we have our interview with John Stockwell, here are some news stories that are relevant to our subject tonight. Another story came out over the weekend that points to the secret team Nexus as the apparatus that's behind the whole Iran-Contra scandals. The story that was reported first in U.S. News and World Report and that hit the AP and UP wire services this weekend indicated that Oliver North wanted to assassinate Iranian officials. The story was leaked to a U.S. military personnel who told the uh, U.S. News and World Report writers about this that North had told them that there was a plan underway to assassinate the Ayatollah Khomeini and other Islamic fundamentalist officials in Iran to try to eliminate them. Again, this points to the secret team because this was the strategy all throughout the Vietnam era in the 1970s that Richard Secord, John Singlaub, North, and their associates used to eliminate political opposition that they wanted to get rid of. In Vietnam, there was the famous uh, Phoenix program that involved assassinations of different leaders in Vietnam that the administration, the U.S. administration wanted to get rid of and Secord was involved in that. There were allegations by the Christic Institute that throughout the 1970s Secord and other CIA personnel were involved in assassinations of Iranian officials at that time. 
uh, rather Iranian democratic opposition to the Shah. And there was also claims that Secord and the secret team went up to Samosa just before his downfall and offered for a good price to assassinate the Sandinista leaders. So North Secord and these people for decades have been involved in political assassinations of opposition leaders. This is a story that John Stockwell broke on our story on our show, Alternative Views, and that he's tried to get this into the New York Times and LA Times as an op ed piece so far without uh, success. You know, other elements of the establishment press, but not the the core establishment press people, have been doing some good work on on this uh, subject. Uh, Newsweek on June 8th, this is reported in the Guardian. Uh, Newsweek reported that the anti-Sandinista Nicaragua Catholic Church uh, reactionary cardinal uh, Miguel Abande Bravo actually was receiving over a hundred thousand dollars from the CIA, or at least they say they may have received a hundred thousand dollars from uh, 19, uh, uh, until 1985. The uh, GAO, the General Accounting Office, found his name on a signature card in the Grand Caymans Island Bank in the account used by the CIA and the Contras. And then what happened when they found that out, they, uh, they stopped paying him directly and Oh, Oliver North picked up the flag <laughs> to give the, give the uh, old Miguel Bandui Brava what he had coming to him. I have some stories from the uh, Tico Times of uh, <laughs> San uh, Jose, Costa Rica that my cousin who lives there uh, sent me that had some very, very interesting um, stories. Here on Alternative Views, we had an in-depth analysis with the uh, Christic Institute about a bombing in uh, La Penca, Nicaragua, several uh, years ago that's part of the whole Iran-Contra scandal of the Reagan administration that has not come out yet at all in the uh, U.S. Uh, media. I haven't read one line about the La Penca bombing or heard anything about it on uh, television, whereas in the Tico Times on the third anniversary of this uh, bombing, they have a several page in-depth story and a lot of related stories. What happened three years ago in La Penca was that Eden Pastora was having a press conference where he was going to denounce the uh, other Contra leaders who were refusing to democratize their forces. Pastora was one of the heroes of the Sandinista revolution in Nicaragua, who was one of the first Sandinista leaders to break with the uh, Ortega regime and to go into exile. And he was trying to link up with the other Contra leaders to have a united front. But Pastora was requiring that the other uh, Contras get rid of some of the uh, tortures from the Somoza regime and some of the uh, terrorists that were involved in the uh, Contra activities. Uh, but the other Contras did not want to go along with uh, Pastora. So it was alleged that they decided to assassinate Pastora. And when he was having this uh, press conference in La Penca, a bomb went off that killed uh, several um, journalists and that uh, was going to be blamed on the Sandinista regime. Well, none of this has really come out in the U.S. Uh, press, but investigations since then indicate that none other than Richard uh, Secord and his group provided the explosives to a terrorist who set the bomb at the uh, La Penca um, site. And it also came out um, in this um, article that there was a big division over Pastora in the Reagan administration where people like uh, Singlaub said it was absolutely essential for the uh, Contras to work with Pastora, whereas people like uh, Oliver North and Secord said that Pastora was impossible, he was uh, too uh, democratic, he was too idealist, and the other Contra leaders could never work with him or get along with him, and so they had to be um, eliminated. Um, this story in the Tico Times also uh, points out that uh,